Thanks for joining us from the Ohio Agnet Voice You Know with the News You Trust Studio, sponsored by Grain Equipment Company, where innovation meets execution. I'm Dave Russell. Well, an increasing number of examples of artificial intelligence in the world of agriculture are now available. One might wonder what to make of artificial intelligence in the ag sector. Indeed, AI examples exist. And as Charles Barrett of Farmers Business Network points out, artificial intelligence is really kind of just the next step of what has actually been going on for a very long time, which is using statistics to make inferences or predictions. And now you have these things called large language models, which basically turn the information that something can be analyzing from the internet or from other data sources and turn it into a usable form. AI resources are usually available through smartphone and tablet apps as well as websites. In essence, the user asks AI a question and it provides interpretive answers. It creates enormous opportunity for the ways in which this can positively impact producers and agriculture. Everything from pest and disease identification to successfully managing the connection between how do I pick the traits to be using on the farm for the optimal economic outlook that I might have in that commodity to how to diagnose and repair machinery. A broad Bain reporting for the U.S. Department of Agriculture in Washington, D.C. The Young Agricultural Professionals 2025 Winter Leadership Experience, an opportunity to build personal and professional skills, network with agricultural leaders, and learn to make a difference within their community. Farm Bureau and Agriculture is coming up February 7th and 8th at Kalahari in Sandusky, Ohio. Registration is now open. Well, looking ahead to the 2025 corn crop, Farmers National Company says 2025 crop inputs are expected to see a slight reduction compared to 2024. While some farms may experience increased costs for specific reasons such as adding lime, improving drainage, or boosting fertility, the overall picture suggests a decrease in expenses for most farms. The reduction is primarily anticipated in fertilizer, crop insurance, and interest costs. Seed, chemicals, equipment, labor, and the cost of land are expected to remain stable. FNC expects fertilizer costs to decrease by up to 10%. Crop insurance costs are expected to be down in 2025 based on current commodity prices for next year. Interest rates have decreased slightly with further reductions expected. As always, FNC says these expectations are based with no major disruptions from weather, worldwide events, or farm bill changes. 26 projects were recent recipients of USDA's latest round of local meat capacity grants. Local meat processing capacity received recent investments via the latest round of grants from a USDA program. Under Secretary for Marketing and Regulatory Programs, Jenny Moffitt. USDA's Local Meat Capacity Grant Program, or we call it Local MCAP, it provides targeted program assistance for small-scale projects to increase production through the purchase and installation of equipment. Totals from the latest award set over $20 million to 26 projects. One example of how local MCAP works via a recently awarded project. Montana Premium Processing Cooperative is going to provide critical support and regional employment opportunities. Using this funding through local MCAP, the cooperative will boost their production capacity by 225% and invest in new equipment such as hoists, vacuum sealers, a bandsaw, and steel containers, which will enhance both their production capacity, but also their efficiency and quality control as well. I'm Rod Bain reporting for the U.S. Department of Agriculture in Washington, D.C. The markets will have those coming up next. Since 1926, Nationwide has been rooted in agriculture. Founded as the Farm Bureau Mutual Automobile Insurance Company with a mission to protect farmers and their communities, we honor our legacy by offering solutions that evolve with the complex needs of today's farms. As the leading insurer of America's farms and trusted by eight farm bureaus for 100 years and counting, Nationwide is on your side. Number one insurer based on 2023 direct written premium per AM best. Nationwide Mutual Insurance Company and affiliates, Columbus, Ohio. 4.8 million. That's the number of acres of soybeans planted in Ohio, making it the state's largest crop. Hi, this is Dusty Sonnenberg, host of the Ohio Field Leader Podcast, a production of the Ohio Soybean Council and Soybean Checkoff. 
Join me as I visit with agricultural leaders and researchers to discuss soybean production, best management practices, precision ag technology, and environmental and water quality topics. Listen wherever you get your podcast, the Ohio Field Leader Podcast. The markets brought to you by Seed Consultants, simply better performance online at seedconsultants.com. At the Board of Trade, December corn 428 and a half, down a penny and a half. March corn 440 and a quarter, down two and a half. November beans 1003 and a half, down eight and a half. January beans 1010 and a half, down 11 and three quarters. July wheat 584 and three quarters, down 13 and a half. At the Mercantile Exchange, December cattle 184.40, up 70 cents. December hogs 82.35, up 57. January feeder cattle to 43.57 up a dollar 32. This is the Ohio Agnet.